Hello MacWarriors, how is it going? Welcome to your daily dose of MacWarrior Online. Today I am playing the Shadowhawk and I wanted to play it with dual rotary autocannons. The problem the Shadowhawk has is that everything is, uh, or both ballistic hard points are in a single side torso, which makes it so that you can go dual rack 5 without taking a standard engine. However, you can take a Rotary 5 and a Rotary 2 with an XL engine, which makes this build quite viable again. Now, uh, we lose a bit of DPS, of course, because we don't have dual rack 5, but it's still good enough, I would say. And we have a um, big weight saver with an XL engine 260 here. So 260 is quite good because uh, 82 kph is really, really good. I mean, like... We have a mid-range build, we don't need any more mobility than that. And again, two dual rotary autocannons. We've got two medium lasers here in our Shadowhawk 5M. This is why I chose this variant, Because, um, by the way, uh, just because it has the two um, energy hard points in the arm. So we got two options for medium lasers here. I got two jump jets, I got uh, three heat sinks, and I've got a bit of ammo here. So two and a half tons for the Rack 5 and two tons for the Rack 2. And that's basically the build. So we got a nice high mounted rotary autocannon fire support build. And this is by the way exactly how it plays it. It's a fire support, uh, it's not a good brawler, but you will see that in the videos how it plays. It's, it's actually pretty fun to play. The skills look like this. So I didn't invest too much into firepower this time. Um, just a little bit on the right side here. I wanted the uh, enhanced uh, UAC and rack notes here. Therefore, I went down the whole right path. And uh, since I'm being here already, I took the magazine capacity on top of that. Second magazine capacity down here and the second uh, rack there. It's a shame that you have to take cooldown to get this because you don't really need these cooldown notes. Try to work around them. And after I finished my build, I got some spare notes that I invested in velocity. So as you can see, this here and this here, they were easily accessible and a bit of velocity is good because then your bullets travel faster and it's easier to lead your shots to the moving targets. That's the only reason. I got a bit of structure here on the 5M, on Shadowhawk 5M, and therefore skeletal density is what I went for. I went almost for full mobility because I didn't have anything else to do. So I went for speed tweak first and after finishing the build, I was like, oh, okay, I have still so many points left. Let's invest that into the torso speed thing. Uh, torso speed because um, your main weapons are torso mounted and again, leading in shots to moving targets is sometimes a bit difficult. Therefore, having the torso yaw and uh, the torso speed stuff is really, really valuable. I skipped jump jets, I skipped operations and we got 60% of radar deprivation and Artillery strikes for long range damage. That's it. Again, this build is uh, on itself very efficient already. You don't really need that many skill nodes unlocked. Again, these, uh, these rack nodes are good. The magazine capacity is kind of mandatory, uh, but everything else is completely optional. And uh, again, this is what it look like, uh, looks like here. And I am having a lot of fun with that on the battlefield. This is the build. I wish you all a lot of fun in the two games that are coming. And if you have that, don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And now it's time to the battlefield. All right, first game of the day. We are playing the Mining Collective. We are playing Domination. I want to find myself a good spot where I can lay some suppressive fire. So this is what Rotary Autocannons are really, really good at. And yeah, I'm just going to pair up with uh, one or two of my Assault Max. Let me see what we have here. Two Mad Cats, a Spirit Bear. And um, wait, that's not an Assault Max, it's a Mjolnir. I think we only have three, so it seems. Uh, yeah, okay, so three assault mechs. I think I'm going to help out the spirit bear because I await him to be uh, on the front line and um, What I can do is I can just harass the enemy to death with my auto cannons here So um, I want them to not be able to focus on my spirit bear. This is a nice fire support build Of course, I've got range on that build, but at the same time uh, I want to get into a good position to shoot my stuff So therefore I'm going to again pair up with that Kodiak Okay, Kodiak is pushing forward and we're going with him. Uh, that's very important. And we are doing something like this. See that? We dri we've driven him back. And there we go. And again, harassing is nice, but if you can harass the enemy to death, it would be even better. So the assassin there is in a very bad spot. We've got a lot of damage from my weapons already. And are we pushing that? I don't know. I don't know. So, um, hmm. I'm a bit... I'm a bit unsure, uncertain about my positioning here because uh, Spirit Bay is over there and they kind of try to pop tart. I'm going to drop the Dardy Strike. I don't care. Let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so my uh, gem gauge, uh, no, gauge is full. I, I learned that word. <laughs> gem gauge is full. We're gonna wait a bit and we're going in and kill that guy. It's kind of important right now. Ah, uh, no, not quite. 
Um, kill the Shadowhawk, he's almost dead. Center torso. I really hope that yeah, this spot is uh, somewhat free here. Uh, Alright. But we can probably kill that Marauder. It's in Lurm boat. I'm going to, to go in on that because um, I just wanted him dead. And therefore I didn't care about my jam gauge there. Oh, Kodiak. Sorry about that. And I dropped the Arty Strike in the wrong position. Don't drop there, there's an Arty Strike coming in. I'm sorry for that. Oh man, I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, the team damage is real. Kill the Death Strike Delta. So we ramp up and we go ahead and kill that guy really fast. Shouldn't be a problem. Come on, where's that guy? There we go. Bring that stuff to target. Somebody else got the kill, but it's fine. We gotta cop pop the cool shot. And getting wrecked from behind, which is not good at all. Ooh, that was uh, a very, very well placed airstrike here. Gonna jump up. It's, sh it's shaking my cockpit like crazy, but it's fine. All right. So heat is on, jam is on, and we've got one more target up there. Oh, and the dagger is coming out now. Ninety percent, ninety-one, and I am jammed. I love this build. I love this this weapon in general, and I love the Shadowhawk in general. So uh, it's just so fun to play. So damn fun to play. Again, I'm very, very curious of my uh, team damage score in the end. Um, and what I'm doing now is super risky. I'm going in as the first mech, which I shouldn't do, actually. But we've got a 100% Stormcrow here, so he's going to tank for me, hopefully. He should be in a place, in a situation, a spot where he should be fine in terms of uh, his own damage. And jabbed again. Oh, Echo another jam. Okay. Still have mediums, we can use them. Alright. <laughs> yeah, again, I went in uh, on that because uh, pff, the whole enemy team is kind of dead here, as you can see. We got a Mad Duck down there, who can't really do anything. Especially since I'm in his bag now. Got all the rotaries in the world. And he's dead. Is that it? No, not quite. Okay, one enemy alive. wonder where he went. If I was an enemy, where would I go? Oh, there he is. Okay. It's a cheetah. Cheetah's trying to fight his way out of there. Or is he running? Ah, he's lagged. Okay, he's not running anymore. So yeah, that's it. Ah, again, the rotary auto cannons. It's kind of one of my new favorite weapons because they are so much fun. You can just lay some serious dagger towards your enemies' faces and uh, yeah, shake the cockpits like crazy with that. Um, let's have a look at the end score. Uh, 42 team damage. That's Okay, considering that I dropped an airstrike, artillery strike on my friends here. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we got one kill, seven assists, two kills, most damage dealt, 884 damage to the enemy. I think that's more important. And three components destroyed. That's the first round. We're going over to the next one right now. All right, second game of the day. We are playing uh, Escort on the Crimson Stray. Escort is interesting. Now, let, let, let me put out some thoughts on that. Uh, this bothers me uh, a, a long time now. So, why? Why is there a VIP, like um, an Atlas, a dropping on the planet and taking a walk around the planet, and then uh, just getting into a dropship and uh, trying to escape again? Is that some rich ass Steiner boy that is just, uh, you know, taking his daddy's Atlas out for a walk? And his rich daddy has now to pay millions and millions of sea bills for some mercenaries to cover his ass just because he wants to, you know, drive an Atlas for once? Is, is it that? And again, it doesn't really make sense, right? So he's, he's dropping. Um, or no, the, the mercenaries are dropping, like um, the, the mechs are dropping on the position where the Atlas is with a dropship. And then they are just taking a walk and um, the Atlas is uh, getting another dropship to, to get out of this. I think that doesn't make sense. Why are not, they are not picking that guy up on the in the first place? Like, when they arrive. Uh, it kind of doesn't make sense in, you know, just law-wise law or whatever. So, hmm. I really wonder what the fluff of this is. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun game mode, actually. I, I really like it. It has a bit of, a, of an actual... Um, objective that you have to fulfill here. So if the VIP dies and it dies very easily, then you lose the game and you should really protect that thing. Guy. Thing. Steiner. Rich boy. Guy. <laughs> Alright. So uh, we are watching the saddle, I guess. Um, not all of us, though. Are we ignoring the saddle? Oh, this would, would be interesting. 
Oh, oh alright. SRM's live machine guns, AMS. Okay, interesting. Interesting uh, Centurion there. Got a bit of damage out. Problem is, this build doesn't really work alone. So you really need to have somebody around that you can support, that you can just uh, use as your meat shield, as somebody that takes the damage while you suppress the enemy. Okay, yeah, that doesn't really, really work. Uh, but yeah, that's an SRM light machine gun Centurion. Interesting. It's a brawler. It's an SRM brawler, which is scary at close range, definitely. Um, but at this point of the game, he's not doing anything but peeking, which is pointless, actually. You shouldn't do that if you are a brawler. Because uh, when you just run into an enemy firing line without dealing any return damage and getting a lot, you are not winning the game with that. This is not working out. So we got another of these beacons. That helps. By the way, I'm just uh, moving back and forth constantly, uh, just because I want to have some kind of momentum. I don't want to stand still in one spot, because um, if uh, an enemy shows up there, then I can just uh, continue pushing my button that I'm just pressing right now and get into some direction quickly. So having some kind of velocity is always good when you are in a position where you expect somebody to come up. Uh, Centurion. Is he alone? Is the Centurion alone? He is uh, going in. Okay, I'm coming to help you. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and kill that guy. He's kind of pinned there, he has no, no mobility at all. Look at that, he's just going left and right and right and left. And all of my weapons are jammed now. Mm, which may or not... Mm, may, maybe it was a bad idea doing that. Okay, pop the daddy strike. That's a thing that I can provide him. Uh, the VIP is going to the saddle. Ooh, air strike coming in. Big time. So I want to get back to second line. This is where I belong. Yeah, guys, we need to. Uh, also... Yeah, right. I don't know why it's Yeah, it's, it's awkward, right? I am not surprised, but there are like four guys chasing a freaking locust. That's. And again, I don't want to be a priority to the enemy with that build here. Uh, I can stare down a single enemy, but not two at the same time. That's very important. Oh, hardy strike. Oh, we got. One out already, okay, so this uh, saves my artist, right? We pop that on the um, Annihilator there, and this is going to be you. Oh, this is going to be great. So suppress these guys. I want to make them walk back, actually. Oh, this is going to be tough. Okay, let's get Echo. Echo is caught, almost. Echo is a Mad Cat too. And yeah, we got a good amount of kills already. Uh, despite having um, less enemies than, than they have. Okay, Lima is next. One auto cannon jammed again. Yeah, they're in a very bad spot. They can't really push here. But I can't sustain it on my own. Four kills. It's Kilo. Yeah, they are they are not no, they are not impressed by my fire here. This is by the way a smart thing. So you just just go ahead and challenge that rotary dude because uh, it's not invincible. It's got a lot of DACA, but it's definitely not invincible. Hot. Alright, need to pull back. And they came back from that. Ooh, that's bad. Yeah, I'm dead. Okay. That's really bad. So my team split up. <laughs> what? 1368 damage. You're yeah, right. Oh, artillery strikes, everybody. Artillery strikes. Um. Let's watch. Let's watch it to the end. The enemy should be so damaged by all of our strikes and all of our rotary auto cannon fire already. But again, I couldn't fight it alone. This is the most important thing of the build. You should not, never ever fight that alone. Also, switching targets is bad. It's a bad habit. I see it on a lot of players. He should have stayed on the Warhammer instead of going for another target. Kill the Warhammer, India. Push it, push it, push it. Do it now. And you have one enemy less on the battlefield that is not fighting you anymore. So important. Commit to kills. Stay on targets. Kill India. India is a Warhammer center torso one shot. There he comes. Yes. So, next one. Uh, what's that? M. What is that M guy? Where, where, is the, where do we have M? Oh, because of the VIP, maybe? Huh, interesting. And again, he's switching target to an enemy he doesn't know. He has no idea, or maybe he knew from before because he wasn't smart and he remembered his damage grid. But he got this Marauder in front of him. And he's changing targets to another Marauder. This is, again, really bad habit. Ah, oh, come on, guys. Yeah, now he's switching again. This Marauder was almost dead here. 
no. I'm sorry, I, uh, Lieutenant Lieutenant wow. Reynolds. Sorry, I don't want to don't want to hate on you. No disrespect, but I just want to make a point here. And um, uh, you're better off fighting the enemies that are coming. They are half dead, all of them. I murdered all the Reds that are coming in. Dude, 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 turn around. Let them shoot your ass off. Dude. Turn around, fight him. They are all one shots. Like seriously. No. The enemies. Come on, come on. You can do it. The range. The Don't be afraid of them. Plenty of front armor. We got plenty of front armor. Cannot show them your hands. Oh, come on. Come on. You can do it. Deal with them first. Shoot him. Yeah. Right. There you go. Not a VIP, not a VIP. No, 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 no. Save your heat, there are enemies yeah. around. Right horse, right horse on the Marauder. Oh god. So close. So close. Alright. Alright. Uh, 1400, kind of 1368, um, it wasn't enough, sadly. It was not enough. But yeah, um, that's the Daily Dose for today. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a rating, subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want to support me, link is down below in the description. Uh, there is the link to my Patreon page. And I hope to see you on the battlefield. Goodbye.